Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp. This video is kind of a follow-up to one of the most popular videos on the channel, and that is the PCA analysis. While that video is relatively straightforward, it requires a few steps to go through it. So you need to produce the distance matrix, you need to load the distance matrix and do the PC analysis with R and then load the additional data sets that could be then plotted in the figure. This video is here to show you an even more simple way of doing PCA with Plink using just one simple keyword or one simple option of Plink. So let's do this. We will use again the AdaptNub data and to make it a bit more manageable, we just select three gold breeds so that we don't have the hundreds of gold breeds on the final figure, but we just select three of them. In this particular case, it is the Togenburg, Rangeland and Teddy Goats. As for every genomic analysis, we need to perform a quality control. So we do just that with the usual settings or kind of generic settings deleting SNPs and individuals that have a missingness rate more than 10% and also minor alley frequencies should be over 5% in the final data set, what we name after QC. The quality control was discussed in length in another video, which I link on the top of the screen right now. So you can review these settings there if you have uh, any questions. And the core of this video is really the next line, the line 25, when we perform the PCA analysis with Plink. And as I mentioned, it's really straightforward, really simple. All we need to do is include one simple option, the dash dash PCA into the Plink line. Basically what it does, it computes the relationship matrix between the individuals and then performs a PCA analysis, putting out a file with the eigenvectors and eigenvalues that we can use for plotting. I have now run the analysis until this point. So 48,000 variants and 136 samples or animals survived the quality control from the three breeds that we mentioned. You see that the Plink was computing a relationship matrix and then put out the results into a .eigenval and .eigenvec files. And this is how this .eigenvec file looks like. The first column is the family ID. The second column is the individual ID. And the third column is actually the first eigenvector. The fourth column is the second eigenvector. The fifth column is the third eigenvector and so on. So by default, 20 eigenvectors are calculated. For our purposes, all we really need, well, most of the time is the first and the second eigenvector. And this is the one that is being plotted in the vast majority of cases. The second file, the .eigenval file contains, well, 20 numbers by default. And these eigenvalues tell something about the measure or the amount of variance explained by the eigenvectors. So if we sum up all the numbers here that we can equate somehow to the total variance, and if we compute the value of the first eigenvector out of this sum, so the proportion of 14 out of the sum of all these numbers, then we get the proportion of the variance explained by the first eigenvector. Similarly, if we compute the proportion of this uh, 8.12 from the total sum of numbers here, we get the variance explained by the second eigenvector. Basically, the PCA analysis is already done. The one thing which remains is to visualize the results. Here we read in both files, so the .eigenval file and the .eigenvec file. Then we use the eigenvalues to compute the proportion of the variance explained by the first and the second. And then we do a PCA plot similarly as before using ggplot. After we run the script, we get this neat figure where we can visualize all the goats and their relationships to each other. In this case, because we have a lower number of breeds, we can also include a neat legend. And also we can clearly distinguish the individuals from respective breeds based on the color and the shape of the dots. In general, we see that the individuals from respective breeds cluster very close to each other as it should be. Perhaps with this one Togenburg goat out of the line somehow. So perhaps this is 
something to look at when you use this data set for follow-up analysis. Okay, so to repeat again, there is a very simple way to do PCA analysis in Plink, just using the dash dash PCA option. Of course, there are other possibilities and you can fine tune these PCA analysis with other related options in Plink. But if you are looking for a quick and simple way to put out a PCA plot for your population, this is really a simple and straightforward way to go. If you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment and potentially share it with your friends and colleagues. For today, I thank you for your time and have a very nice rest of the day.